Hello, YouTube. And good morning. This is Wednesday, September 26th, and this is Chris here. Uh, yesterday, I didn't get a video out. Uh, did not feel good yesterday. Very depressed, very down, very out. And I know you guys do not want to see a video of me laying in the bed all day. My videos aren't exciting to begin with. It's mainly me having a conversation uh, with whoever wants to watch. And that said, I um, wanted to talk to a user that sent me some messages or make a quick statement. Uh, salty eggs. Cool name, by the way. And uh, I eat a lot of eggs. <laughs> So, uh, because they're quick, cheap, and easy to make, and they taste good. Um, I appreciate your comments, and uh, that's real cool, you know, to see someone commenting back at me like that, and you seem to know, you know, you seem to, you know, know what you're talking about. And, uh, so I really want to say I appreciate that. I haven't got a lot of comments, and I have got some comments, of course, but... Um, not that many, but you know what, it's nice when someone is taking the time to do that for me, so. Cool, and you're from Canada, I noticed, and, uh, that's cool, I've always wanted to come to Canada. Living in Pensacola, Florida, you know, it's just, I've always wanted to experience a real winter, and I like the cold. Now, I know it gets super cold up in Canada, but, you know, being here, I've only seen snow three times in my lifetime, and all three times it was brief and it didn't stick and to me winter time is snow and cold and here I have to wear shorts and t-shirts year round because the coldest it gets here at nights is upper 20s low 30s daytime it averages about the upper 50s so that's not much of a winter and I you know like I said I wear shorts and a t-shirt and I see people here bundled up ridiculous it's not cold at all it's, plus we have humidity so you know, it doesn't seem that bad. So I've always wanted to come to Canada just because, uh, one, there's a lot of, like, uh, area up there where you can get away, get alone, even though I'm a loner. But, you know, it's more beautiful up there. A lot of places you can go and reflect and just escape the world. And uh, that would be nice. And uh, besides, it'd be something different. And I'd actually get to experience wintertime, a true winter. So I think that's cool to have someone from Canada taking a, a, an interest in me, so I appreciate that. Um, this video here won't be very long because I'm kind of crunched on time this morning. I've got two doctor's appointments I've got to go to. I've got my psychiatric appointment this morning at 11.30, and right now it's 11.07. But I'm in the parking lot of that appointment, followed by a counseling session that is one hour which may be two hours today, I'm not sure. I got, I get a uh, two hour session four times a year and a one hour session the other eight. So I think my appointment today might be the two hour session. And I'm going to discuss my uh, YouTube venture here. See what my counselor thinks of it. I haven't really discussed that with him, so. We'll see, and uh, that's the norm. Um, really don't have a lot to talk about today, I mean, really it's just same old, same old, just lonely and tired of being lonely and, you know, just would love to just be with, be around people, you know, and even with my anxiety, if I got to know you first, it'd be a little easier, so, I don't know. I do know that uh, some of my videos may sound stupid, but... I'm just speaking from the heart, you know, about back to the female robot video. Hey, I was just talking about something that I felt might be something that would be an option, you know. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't see the problem with it when you've got human-like skin and you've got computers that are smarter than humans and they can be programmed to the way you want them to be programmed. The only fear would be viruses and the computer actually malfunctioning and possibly uh, taking over and, and doing harm, but I don't know. I'm not thinking of it like that. I'm thinking of it as a positive. And sure, you won't have that human emotional bond that you know that you get with another human, but 
It's better than being alone. Um, an emotional bond is something I'm really yearning for because I've never had an emotional bond with another person. And uh, I feel like we as humans desire and need that. Um, from the time we were born, we are coddled. Uh, well, depending on your situation, um, you're coddled. You know, uh, you get loved on uh, for the majority. And I know there are people who tragically have been abused, and I feel so bad for those people. But the majority of, of children are raised, they're coddled, they're told one way or the other. And, you know, and um, so that emotional thing kicks in early because that's what you see. You see nothing but emotions when you're young. So, it's, I think that goes a long way to your, you know, how you are as an adult. The instances and the situations you go through as a child reflect. And I get a lot of people saying, oh, get over it and move on. Those people just don't understand mental diseases at all. Um, some people may have a switch in their brain that they get depressed and they get over it, but some brains are just not wired that way some brains are wired to the effect of you know just that depression gets in there all the it's like it's a disease you know what I'm saying people that just get over it don't have the disease they may go through a depressed period or whatever but it's just rare for them random for me it's a lifelong experience so I'm not, you know, I'm not, I, I'm book smart, I guess, in a way, but I'm not the smartest guy in the world, and uh, so, I've really, this subject, I'm just basically trying to grasp on what I've read, and, you know, if your brain, like, depression runs in my family, my grandmother, depression and anxiety, my mother, schizophrenic tendencies with depression and anxiety, my aunt was bipolar, schizophrenic, um, again, anxiety. My dad had depression, social anxiety. Now, my dad's side of the family, I don't really know. I do know my dad had it. Um, he wasn't around. He ditched me, just as my mother. But my mother was still in my life, even though my grandmother raised me. So I got it from, you know, double. So I get it from both sides. So it's kind of bad. It's, and I firmly believe that it's inherited. But there is an opportunity in life to experiences that even though it's inherited, it doesn't kick in. Something has to trigger it, and it triggered for me long ago. Through the experiences of being rejected and put down and never given a chance. And just, just imagine, you know, up until fifth grade, kids were different, I suppose. It was cool going to school. I made straight A's. I was number two in the class. The entire like school for the five years, I was number two. And I got beat by another girl by, I think, 0.5% overall when they accumulated all six years from K through fifth grade. Percentages of grades. And she beat me by like 0.5. It didn't bother me, though. What did bother me, though, is we had like a school. Uh, a middle school here and I think if I would have got to go to it things might be different for me it was a uh, it was a middle school for the exceptionally smart I guess so they called it gifted and unfortunately each elementary school had a set number of students that would be eligible to go to the school because it was out of district now if you were in the district it was more easier but I was out of district so only one kid from our school was eligible and I got beat and I got sent to the ghetto middle school. So here I am, I'm a straight A student going into middle school and kids changed and it wasn't about grades anymore. I tried hard but I could not focus on my work being made fun of because I didn't go through that. I tried to make friends, I tried to talk to girls, you know, I was at 12 years old I guess and that's when you first, a boy first starts realizing about girls and hey, I tried. Rejection rejection. So you go from a straight A student all through elementary school to 6th grade uh, AB, 7th grade 
a few more C's crept in, and by eighth grade it was a B C average. And I'm not even going into high school because it was just all downhill from there. Got into high school, I skated by ninth grade with a C average, and I failed tenth grade twice, straight F average both times. So I didn't desire to go to school anymore. I didn't want to be there, so I wasn't going to perform. And I wasted my brain. I had a family member who was going to put me through any college that I wanted to go to as long as I maintained my grades. I didn't do that. All because of the way I was treated and abused for no reason. Not physically abused, mentally. All I wanted was friends. And sure, oh, you could say, block it out. Don't let them bother you. Well, I wasn't wired that way. I was a person yearning for an emotional attachment and bond with someone. And, and I, I wanted to feel needed, and I wasn't. And uh, it sucked because I had my grandmother who could not relate. She was older. I didn't have anyone else to relate to family-wise. So and there you have it. I was all alone. And you need to, when you're a young kid, you need your peers. I didn't have any peers. So it's starting to upset me to the point where I just, uh, I'm getting really sad right now. But that's a little bit of insight on my life. And uh, I will further get into it. But uh, this video's long. I'm done. I've got to go to my appointment now. So I'll try to get a video out tomorrow, Thursday. But I'm not going to guarantee it. And I'm sorry for the lack of videos. But do you really want to... Actually, you know what? There are people that enjoy seeing someone just have sitting and having conversation. But to those of you who enjoy this, thanks. To those of you who don't, I'm sorry. Can't be Donnie Miller. Or... And I always refer to him because he's the one that I see. You know, that talks about his issues, but he does it completely different than me. Sorry, I'm not him, not going to be him. He's a cool dude. At first I had doubts, but uh, I changed my opinion after hearing from him a little further. And, um, you know, if he can go out there and do that, great. I'm the conversationalist. I'm the guy that's going to sit here and I'm going to talk your ear off. And if you don't want to listen, I wish you would, but nothing I can do about it. All right, I've talked enough. Got my appointments, and I'll tell you how they go.